Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So the iPhone 15, the iPhone 15 Pro have hit the shelves, some times gone past so that we can do some benchmarking. And in this video, I want to look at the A17 Pro from Apple and compare it to the previous generation of processor, that's the A16 Bionic, and also compare it to the leading processors from the Android ecosystem. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's look at the performance of Apple's latest chip, Apple's previous chip, and the current leading chips from Qualcomm MediaTek and uh, Google. So let's remind ourselves quickly about the A17 Pro. I've got a whole deep dive video on this here on this channel, but it is a 19 billion transistor processor built on a three nanometer process from TSMC. That means it has three billion more transistors than the A16 Bionic, which we're going to be looking at as well. And that's an 18.7% increase in the number of transistors. Of course, remember, some of that will be in the fact there's an extra GPU core being added. And then here we have the other ones just to show the progression from the A13 all the way up to the A17, particularly this one here. The A13 to the A14 was a huge jump in the number of uh, transistors, as was the A14 to the A15, 38% more, 27% more, uh, and so on. Now, if you remember this 10% uh, faster for the CPU overall, and we're gonna be looking at the scores for that, uh, and also it says here that the GPU is 20% faster as it now has a six core GPU design. The previous one was a five core GPU design, which of course is therefore 20% faster, but this GPU now supports hardware accelerated ray tracing. Now, what about the other devices? Well, let's compare the A17 Pro to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So here we've got this hexa-core setup, and in the 8 Gen 2, we've got the octa-core setup, one high-performance core, that's the Cortex-X3, running at 3.1 gigahertz, uh, 3.2 gigahertz almost. Interestingly, they reckon that the A17 Pro has been running at 3.7 gigahertz, so much, much higher there for those high-performance cores. Then you've got some middle cores here, A715, A7110, and then finally three uh, perform, uh, efficiency cores in the Cortex A510 running at two gigahertz. Here are the four efficiency cores running at 2.1 gigahertz. Six core GPU with hardware ray tracing, uh, Adreno 740 with hardware ray tracing. And then the other stuff here is just about Bluetooth and, and all that kind of stuff. So not so much to do with the performance, uh, but interestingly, they both now support AV1 decode. From the other side, we've got the uh, Google Tensor G2. And this really is a few generations behind because you've got a Cortex X1. If you look at the dimensity here, it's called X3. So this really is a bit behind. Uh, and then of course, it's still also an octa core setup, 224. Here you've got that more familiar 134. So one high performance core running at three gigahertz and then three A715s at 2.8 gigahertz and four uh, efficiency cores. Here you've got the R Mali G710 uh, MP7, no hardware ray tracing. Here you've got the Immortalis with the G715, that's got hardware uh, ray tracing. Uh, and then again, AV1 decoding, you know, uh, 5G and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's look at our first uh, actual benchmark. This is using Geekbench 6, single core scores. Higher is better. I know that some of you don't particularly like Geekbench 6, but that's the numbers I've got for today. So what do we see? Here is the A17 Pro. It's the leader at 2,931. Next, we have the uh, A16 Bionic with 2,506. And then after that, we've got the Snapdragon 8 Generation 2, the Dimensity 9200, and the Tensor G2. So we can see a nice progression there. These last two are Apple's offerings and we can see that when it comes to single score we can see that the uh, A17 Pro actually offers almost a 17% increase in performance compared to the A16 Bionic. We move over to multi-score again we see that the A17 Pro is in the lead 7278 and then that's compared to 6508 for the A16 Bionic and then after that you have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 then the Dimensity 9200 and then the Tensor G2 and again here you see an 11.8%. This is probably the uplift that Apple were talking about. They say 10%. Okay, so that's the uplift in performance they were talking about for the CPU. Now when it comes to 3D Mark, it's a bit of a different story, a bit of a mixed bag here. The winner is the uh, Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra with the Snapdragon uh, 8 Gen 2 in there, a score of 13,298, followed by the Vivo X90 Pro with a score of 
13,131. Then when you come down to the Apple here, we see it's quite a big difference here. Uh, 10,000, 9,800 for the uh, Apple iPhone 14 Pro, and then way down at 6,000 for the Pixel. As I said, this really is a few generations behind. So here we can see that's a 32% difference between the Apple iPhone 15 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. So it's definitely a big difference there for the wildlife benchmark. However, it's not always true because if you look at the wildlife extreme, actually the iPhone 15 Pro is just slightly ahead. In fact, 5% ahead compared to the S23 Ultra. And uh, But of course, the S23 Ultra and the Vivo X90 Pro both beating the iPhone 14 Pro, which by extrapolation would mean they also beat the current iPhone 15. That's the non-Pro version. So when you get to stress tests, so this is the 3D Mark graphic, so this is the wildlife stress test. As we can see here, the Samsung and the Vivo both winning there. Big gap difference, as I already showed you, between that and the iPhones. And basically, you get, what, is this now? About eight runs of the test before they start to hit this area where it's basically, uh, you can see that after this line here, after about eight runs, things start to settle down where everybody's kind of giving you the same performance, ignoring the uh, Google uh, Pixel there. So although there isn't that much of a drop here at the beginning for the Apple, but it does stay fairly consistent until the point where everybody is basically offering you the same kind of performance after multiple runs and multiple runs due to thermal throttling and so on. Now what about ray tracing? Because these new devices now have ray tracing built into them. So when it comes to the 3D Mark Solar Bay ray tracing benchmark, the iPhone 15 Pro comes out on top with 26.1 frames a second, followed by the Vivo, that's of course got the ARM uh, Mali Immortalis uh, GP unit, 22.19, uh, almost 21 frames a second for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. And then an interesting one here, just to throw this one in there as well, the Exynos 220 in the Galaxy S22 Ultra coming in there at 14. This is all with ray tracing, they're all ray tracing. The Google chip is not in there because it doesn't support hardware uh, ray tracing. However, what's interesting, if you do a stress test, that actually that peak performance of the Apple in particular doesn't last very long. Just after one run, it then comes down to a much lower level. So that's really interesting. So it does offer a greater peak performance at one time you run the test. Once you get to the second run, which is not very far really, then it, it, it drops down. And whereas the uh, the other two chips there, the uh, Snapdragon and the uh, Dimensity, stay fairly well up until, what's this, four or five runs, and then things start to change. However, at the other end here, where we're looking at 15, 16, 17 runs, basically everyone seems to be giving you the same relative performance performance, particularly if you've got the Samsung there and the uh, iPhone, you're going to get the same kind of performance. So after uh, several runs, then things kind of level out. But the interesting thing is here over on the left, as I showed, is that really that uh, first peak performance is, a, is just a bit of a cheat, really, because it doesn't last very long. And then it comes down quite significantly. So that's something to be aware of when looking at those peak performance numbers. Okay, so there we have it. So the A17 Pro clearly ahead in terms of raw CPU power. When it comes to GPU power, it looks like things are looking pretty even across the whole board and more so when you start to look at ray tracing. But I'd love to hear your interpretation of the results in the comments below. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.